Memorial Day weekend, guys. Good to see everybody. I'm going to start out with a song here today. You guys help us sing. From the rising of the sun To the going down of the same Oh, the name of the Lord Shall be praised From the rising of the sun We are fighting wind like crazy. It's taking our voices away and blowing stuff over. We have more rocks hidden in these plants and stands than ever before. So uh, this is not our last week. One more week, fifth Sunday. Next week, same time. When you pull in, we'll have a couple of coolers over here. Maybe a pop-up if it doesn't end up in Bloomfield. And you will get your bulletin with your song sheet and inserts. You'll pick up a Lord's Supper. It's a little bitty pre-packed with juice on one end and wafer on the other. That's going to be interesting to test our dexterity. It has been Beck tested and approved, so it works. And you'll also pick up a sack lunch. We're going to also, and we have invited uh, CMA bikers to come and any others that pull in and hopefully we don't have so much wind next week. I'm getting a real bad echo. Is that in just my head or everywhere? It's almost feeding back on me. Yeah. Okay. I've got to deal with my own head one more time. That's how you do it. You just take one, uh, one side off and then you're uh, right. Let's remember to pray for one another. This is week eight. Week eight. And we are needing more than ever people 
back into our lives. We are needing more than ever some routine apart from the routine that has been put upon us. We need to pray for leadership in all areas that decisions would be made that will um, ultimately honor God in the bigger picture. It may not be exactly to our liking, but uh, God is in charge, folks, no matter what's going on. We need to not lose track of that. So let's remember each other. Let's start this day off a little different. I'm going to have to stand up. Some of you can't see it. Maybe back there, I know Tom and Dulcie, they can see the gold eagle right above Joe's truck. But there is an American flag there. And we're going to say the Pledge of Allegiance together, if I can figure out how to stand up and not, not fall on all this stuff. So let me get situated. I think that'll work, okay? You can get out of your car if you want. You can, okay? I'll give you a second to do that. Don't let your hat go to Bloomfield either, okay? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty, justice for all. It's being tested, is it not, right now, at every level. We're going to look at freedom today. Thank you for doing that. We're going to continue on, but I want to recognize how many of you uh, have served in the military? Honk your horn. Or strum your guitar. I know, uh, I don't know that we have all branches represented, uh, so let's do it this way. I know we have Navy. I don't know if Navy's here. Navy? Okay. Marines. They're down in Carlsbad, I think, right now. Army. Air Force. Coast Guard or any of the, what do we call the, uh, no, not the Coast Guard, the guys that come and help internal, National. National Guard. Thank you, National Guard. National Guard. Space Force, anybody in the Space Force yet? <laughs> not yet, that's the next generation. Thank you all for your service. We are going to look at freedom today. We're going to primarily look at biblical freedom and the kingdom freedom that we all enjoy when we come to craw to Christ. So as people are still coming in, getting settled in, and we keep banging, everything I touch makes a noise. Let's continue on, Stan. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. Did we pray? Oh my goodness, we didn't pray, and I guess I, guess I thought we did because we are praying without ceasing internally. So let's pray externally, but we will cease eventually, okay? I'm still getting all kinds of feedback, and I don't know where it's coming from. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you we can be out here in the parking lot. We thank you we can worship you from our cars, from our chairs. We thank you, Father, although right now we don't particularly like the wind, but we, we thank you for that. It has its purpose in everything. Father, we thank you that we still live in a place that is freer than anywhere else, whether we recognize that or not. But we also feel an encroachment in many areas, and we're struggling with that. Help us in this struggle to not confuse our Americanism with our Christianity. Help us to be Christian Americans and not just American Christians and know the difference between the two. And Father, that will take some discernment for all of us because we all have different views about a multitude of things. We have people that are still absolutely scared to even come to the parking lot because they've been told to stay home. We have other people that tend to be going the other direction. And we're trying to find a balance and we're trying to find some civility in it as well. There are so many that are out in the workforce every day many of them teenagers and young people, and they're taking a pretty good tongue lashing from people from time to time because of the frustration. Help us to not be a part of that problem and to be kind to one another because Christ lives in us. 
Father, be with our worship service today. Help us to lift up the name of Christ in song, to honor our country and those who have served, but to know again that the main thing in our life is the kingdom of God in our life through Christ. We thank you for this day in Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, going to sing an old one to get it started here today. It's been a few weeks, it's been a few months since we've been to Life Care, huh, George? But uh, this is a life care favorite, and I like it too. Down at the cross where my Savior died, down where for cleansing from sin I cried. There to my heart was the blood of life. Glory to His name. Oh, glory to His name. Like life care, you push me, aren't you? Right? That's what I love about you, George. <laughs> Come on, try another verse with us today. I am so blessed, they say, from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides within. There, Jesus saves me and keeps me clean. This fountain that saves from sin I am so glad I am returning There Jesus saves me and keeps me clean Glory to His name Oh, glory to His name Glory to His name Oh, there to my heart was the blood To this fountain so rich and sweet, cast our poor soul at the Savior's feet, plunge in today and be made complete. Glory to His name, oh, glory to His name, glory to His name. Oh, there to my heart was the blood. Another one together with us here this morning. As we come into your presence, we remember every blessing that you poured out so freely from above. Lifting gratitude and praises, compassion so amazing. Lord, we come. Thanks for all you've done.
songs of freedom forever we're changed all because of your love just a chorus one more time sing because of your love Lord we're forgiven Songs of freedom forever we're changed all because of your love forever we're changed forever we're changed all because of your love hey man good song like that one George you're sounding good back there today buddy Rashing it back here. <laughs> Fun to be outside. I was telling PT a week or so ago. I don't, I don't know if I'll be able to go back in. What's that, buddy? Oh, Donka. You throwing a little Dutch at me there, aren't you? You working me? Appreciate that. Yeah, hey, telling PT the other day, I, I think it's going to be hard to go back in. Kind of liking it. Chris, you got to give Chris a toot out here today. My goodness. You guys have been working overtime to make sure you got that signal in your car. We got the signal coming out front here. Make sure we can hear up here. It's it's a lot of extra stuff, you know. It really is. But uh, man, it's isn't it awesome to be out here today? It's good, loving it. Hey, here's a song we uh, we threw in the other day. It was new for us. Forgive me, I'm tuning here just quickly. Get this guitar outside, and it has a real attitude, you know. It's the sunshine, it's the shade, it's the wind. It likes to move. But man, I like this song we're going to sing right now. It just, it goes straight back to the gospel. The book of John, chapter 3, verse 16, God so loved the world. <laughs> and it sings, it goes like this. Come all you weary, come all you thirsty, come to the well, it never runs dry. Drink from the water, come and thirst no more. Come all you sinners, come find his mercy, come to the table, it will satisfy. Taste of his goodness, find what you're looking for. For God so loved the world that he gave us, his one and only Son to save us. Whoever believes in him will live forever. Bring all your failures, bring your addictions, Come lay them down, the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting there with open arms. For God so loved, for God so loved the world that he gave us. His one and only Son to save us. Whoever believes in him will live forever. Power of hell forever defeated Now it is well I'm walking in freedom For God so loved For God so loved the world Try that bridge with me Praise God Praise God From whom all blessings flow Praise Him Praise Him for the wonders of His. We'll sing it again. Sing praise God, praise God, for whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, praise Him for the wonders of His love. For God so loved the world that He gave us. 
one and only son to save us. We have her believes in him. We'll live forever. The power of hell. The power of hell. Forever defeated. Now it is well. I'm walking in freedom. For God so loved. For God so loved the world. Bring all your failures. Bring all your failures. Bring your addictions. Come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting there with open arms. Lord, we just thank you today that you invite us to come just the way we are broken with failures, with addictions, with struggles, each and every one of us in our lives. God, you're, you're guiding us through those. You're molding us, you're making us and shaping us a little more to be like Jesus Christ every single day. And Lord, for that, we're so grateful. Thank, thank you, Lord, for the, for the event of salvation that happens in our lives. When we ask you to come into our, our lives, Lord, you, you do that. You do that immediately. But, Lord, there's the process of salvation that you continue in our lives. And, God, we thank you for that as well today. Using every struggle, every difficulty that comes through this life, again, to mold us and, and shape us. So for this morning, Lord, we're so grateful. And as we celebrate Memorial Day weekend across the United States today, Lord, we thank you for those who have... Uh, perhaps heard your words, Lord, where you said, no greater love has any man than this. And he laid down his life for his friends. God, we've had so many in the history of our country that have followed your example, Lord, laying their lives down for us, deeming the, the needs of others to be more, ex, more, more expedient than the needs of themselves. God, we thank you for that. Grow us today, Lord, in this time that we spend together. We pray you'll use it in every way that you deem necessary, Lord, this morning. As we open up your word today, God, help us to open our hearts and our, our eyes, our minds to receive those things that you have for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Sing it one more. Learned this one in school, didn't we? I don't know if they'd still teach it in school, but... Yes, sir. Do they? I'm glad they do. Remember our little music teacher playing the words? Playing the notes, rather, we were singing the words. And maybe even a little tear coming down her eyes. She heard a little first and second grader singing it for the first time, right? Learning those words. Yeah, I'll sing it together this morning. Singing this one for my buddy Lee today. Oh, beautiful. For spacious skies, for amber waves of grain, for purple mountains, majesty above the fruited plains, America, America, God shed His grace on thee. And crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. Oh, beautiful for heroes proved in liberating strife, who more than self their country love. In mercy more than life America, America May God thy gold refine Till all success be nobleness And every grace divine Oh beauty for patriots dream who sees beyond the years thine alabaster cities gleam undimmed by you 
human tears America America God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea I think that'll work. Special rock. The wind's coming from a different angle today. It's making it a little more interesting up here. Before we start taking notes, I want to do a pretty uh, fairly good size introduction before we get looking and starting at our notes, okay? This was actually kind of where I began uh, to put things together for today, and it, it, it turned a little bit of a corner. So uh, I want to, again, understand that Christian freedom is different from American freedom. They overlap at many points, but they don't overlap at every point. And so we need to make sure that we understand the difference between the two. One is where we live right here and now. The other, we also live in the kingdom of God through our Savior Christ, but that kingdom is eternal. So that is a huge difference. Let's define freedom first from an American position. Constitutional freedoms. We have certain freedoms in the Bill of Rights. They're being confused right now, but it's not the first time in our nation's history. Many of those freedoms that exist today in the Constitution were not written in originally. And so women have only been voting for a hundred years, but our country is much older than that. Slaves were freed because of that, but not at the beginning. Civil rights has been in my lifetime when I was in grade school. We continue to wrestle with how do we have constitutional freedom in a world that is worldly and in an America that seems to be coming less and less God-centered because we have forgotten at the very beginning of our Constitution that we all have, and this is the ideal, this is the truth and the reality, but it's not how it plays out every day. We all have certain inalienable rights given to us by our Creator. Life, liberty, pursuit of happiness, that's not all-inclusive. That's part of a list. Now, that's the fact that God gives us life, and therefore he gives us rights. But we don't live in a world that recognizes that right now. We don't live in a world that recognizes Christian faith among many. Many have also taken the Christian faith, and all it has become is a religious church function and not necessarily the body of Christ. So we need to understand that there, there are big differences in what God's Word teaches and in how we actually live it out. So just because our Constitution guarantees certain things doesn't mean we're going to get it. That's how it should be. That's what we strive for. And it's really tough right now in a worldwide pandemic that's being redefined in so many different nations and cultures. We also have, and this is what we're going to focus on today when I shift gears here, God-given freedom that comes only through his grace, and his grace comes only through the cross of Calvary. And God-given freedom also comes as we relinquish certain earthly freedoms to live our life, we have to lose our life. The greatest love is laying down your life for somebody else. 
We have things that only make sense if we're looking to the eternal. Because in the here and now, if this is all there is, then some of these things really do not make a whole lot of sense. And why would we want to relinquish? Right now, we are having certain things given to us from our government that are not legislated. And yet they are enforceable through the state police and through the state government. It's a very interesting position we're in right now because we're, we're having things that are required that we didn't ask for and we didn't legislate. So we're, we're dealing with some of that going forward. And because of that, as a believer, there's a lot of stuff that I would just like to do. But I'm having to figure out how to tone it down, back it off, or just plain old let go. And that is hard to do. What is the cost of freedom? Two points of view. Earthly freedoms are usually paid for in advance by past generations. That's Memorial Day. People gave their lives, limbs, country treasure so that we could be sitting in this parking lot today. Notwithstanding, a lot of people don't want us in the parking lot today. But here we are. We can still do that. Kingdom freedom is paid for in advance also, but it's paid by Jesus' blood on the cross of Calvary. And it is prepaid and only is activated when you accept that prepayment. Two more statements and then we'll start taking notes off of your sheet there, okay? What are some outcomes of living free? And I'll let you wrestle with earthly freedom versus kingdom freedom. When the world takes away freedoms, they are rarely given back. That's why we have to fight back. Because when the world takes it away, it's not going to give it back. But there's another side of that too. Living free without accountability and responsibility leads to a degeneration of freedom. And that's a tough one. Because right now we have some of our church family that are going to stay in their house until they are told they can come out. That's just what they're going to do. Others will come out and they'll try to follow some good guidelines. You don't have to take, you know, a whole flock to go shop. You can take one person and go do it. We're trying to figure out these new boundaries, and we're trying to figure out what is responsible, what is accountable, and what is free, and what is not free. And it's got a lot of us turned upside down right now. So we are going to have to venture forward. If you have not figured out yet, people are driving faster now. More people are driving, and more people are driving more faster. Bad grammar, but you know what I just said. And people are trying to st keep order, and yet we're walking this fine line of, am I responsible for everybody else, or do I do what I'm supposed to do and let everybody else figure out what they need to do? That's a tough one, too. And you know what? Take away this whole COVID right now. And what I just said, everything I just said is still true no matter. We wrestle because, folks, we are in the world but not of the world. So that is our struggle. Okay, let's shift gears here. Let's take some notes, the notes that you were given and you have in your car. And uh, let me get to page one, although some may want me to start at page three, but I'm not going to. Aren't you glad I didn't say page ten? Number one, the Bible states emphatically in Galatians 5.1 that believers are free in Christ. Galatians 5.1, stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Before Jesus died on a cross, God's people lived under a very detailed system of laws that served as a moral compass to guide their lives because the Holy Spirit was not in them. Christ had not gone to the cross yet. And the law 
while powerless to grant salvation or to produce true freedom, nevertheless, it pointed the way to Christ. And it was still part of God's plan until Christ came and brought the new covenant. Now, by law, it means several things. Those of you who were with me on the Zoom study the other night, we looked at the Pharisees, we looked at the legalists, the lawyers, and uh, we see a process that God uses in all of this to shake our faith, to shape our faith, to grow us in our walk with the Lord. And so what he's talking about in the immediate context is, when you come to Christ, you are free from the Levitical law, the ceremonial law. Right now, we do not have to kill an animal before we can walk into the building. Now, we're not there yet, right? But we've never had to do that. We do not have to keep certain rituals of the ceremonial law that proved that you belonged to God. Because what developed over time is people learned very quickly they could comply on the outside and keep the law and be absolutely corrupt on the inside. And then what happens when we allow that kind of thinking to rule our life and we're going through it to a degree right now. We're trying to figure out where boundaries are, where borders are, where, where other people are at socially and, and up in their head and emotionally. We're, we're navigating a minefield right now. And some people are very rigidly keeping certain things and certain order because that's what they are convicted to do and because that gives them a sense of of. of control because then there's some some uh, rules to follow then you got a whole nother group that says the heck with rules and just does whatever they want and it stirs it up no matter how you do it if we apply this within the context of this verse we as believers are free to worship God from our heart because the Holy Spirit lives within us if we've accepted the gospel message. And we don't have to try to be good people. We don't have to keep all the rules and boundaries that was being talked about in Galatians. The law of the Old Covenant has almost 700 rules to follow. And when Jesus was asked, what's the greatest of all of those laws? You remember the answer? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. The second greatest is like unto it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Right now, that should be the thing that is navigating, steering, and motivating every believer as we find ourselves in this crazy, uh, flipped upside down world we're in right now. And yet, I know, as people are watching us, there are those that are watching Christian reactions out in public, and they, they don't like it. They're disagreeing with it because not everybody is, is keeping the, the distance. Not everybody is masked up. Not everybody is, is doing what we're told to do. And so they look at the body of Christ and just say, why would I want to be a part of that? Well, again, these are people that may not have the Spirit of God in them and they can't discern the, the, between the two. So right now, what I am trying to do in my own life is be free, but also figure out where the lines are for accountability and responsibility. Galatians tells us about this ceremonial law, which fills a good portion of the Old Testament in our Bible. And in Galatians 3, 19 to 24, and I've added all that so that we can follow the thought. Wherefore then serveth the law? Why do we have the law? Why was it even given? Here's why. It was added because of transgressions. Until the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now, a mediator is not a mediator of one. But God is one. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. 
For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith, which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. The difficulty of the laws and the mandates being imposed upon us now is we don't like them. They seem to conflict with everything we've been taught, with our Constitution and all of that. And yet, the opposite of that would be much worse. It's called anarchy, where everybody just does whatever they want all the time with no guidelines, no structure. If I want to drive down a different side of the road, I can. If I don't want to pay attention to the stoplight, I don't have to. If I want to, and just pick, pick and fill in the blank. So God gives government and laws in this world not because they are spiritual, but because it keeps people in reasonable line and lessens the damage when there is no law whatsoever. Anarchy is just when people do whatever they want all the time. They are their own master and leader, and life becomes worthless at that point. We don't want to go there. That's why I'm struggling with what we're going through right now. Because a piece of me just wants to cut loose and say, let's do what we always did. And yet we can't do it right now. And we have in our midst baby Christians and older Christians and unbelievers and everything in between. We have people simply trying to do their job and get a paycheck and they're getting grief from everybody. We have other people that are getting paid to basically not do a whole lot right now because that's just where they ended up. And we've got everything in between and, and it's becoming very difficult to know how to deal with this. First bullet, and then I'm going to have to pick up my pace here. Through his sacrificial death, Jesus fulfilled the law. He dotted every I, he crossed every T, and he set believers free from the law of sin and death because the law concludes that all are under sin. The law concludes that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The law calls for the wages of sin is death. And because Jesus fulfills the law that we cannot, we find freedom from sin, its destruction, its outcome, and ultimately eternal death. And we are given the alternative of forgiveness and mercy and love and grace and eternal life. The second bullet then becomes true because of the cross of Jesus. God's laws are now written in our hearts through the Spirit of God. And we are free to follow and serve Christ in ways that please and glorify Him. Are you catching the rub here? In my Americanism, I want to be free to follow and serve Christ in ways that I want to and choose to and pick to and that's not what he's asking us to do. He's asking us to die to self that he might live in and through us. And we're struggling with that right now. In this new relationship that the law of God, which is the love of God, his grace and forgiveness and mercy is written in our hearts, we know that the greatest law is to love God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And we also know that we don't, as ourselves on our own power, we don't do so well in that area. So we must love God and let him live his life in us. Romans then gives us the outworking of this faith. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, 
but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. And that, folks, is, is the dividing line right there. When I'm walking with Jesus today, I am spiritually minded. Even though I'm saved, but I begin to walk fleshly minded, I lose my way because at that point I have taken over control again instead of Christ in my life working in me through his grace. To be carnally minded is death. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. And that one part of that verse, folks, can be the way that we take our spiritual temperature. If you feel like you're living in death right now and you're confused every day and your thinking is muddled and your feelings are flip-flopped upside down and you're becoming either totally passive or totally aggressive or very apathetic or very gung-ho to go out and, 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 and fight back, that's why, because we're still viewing things primarily through the flesh. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. That's where I want to be because that's how we will get through this pandemic and come out on the other side the right way. If we can live spiritually minded, we will be able to go back into the building, not just because we like being in the building and out of the wind and temperature controlled and all that, but because we can go in there if we have peace in our heart. And everybody's going to come into this in their own time and way. Next week will be our last week out here in the parking lot. Then we're going to transition inside. But I already know there are people who will choose not to do that, some for health reasons, some for uncertainty or fear, some because we haven't been told that we can do that yet, and yet we have been told. I've already done the numbers. I know what we can do inside. And we're going to find out if we have become strengthened in this or weakened in this. So that if we are in the flesh, the last part of the verse says this, they that are in the flesh cannot please God because we're trying to do what we want to do. And we're and you guys know me. I am pushing a lot of boundaries right now. And some of them I'm paying for because I have to back off and go, okay, is that is that just me doing what I want to do or am I trying to defend something? And sometimes it, it's it's hard to tell which is which. In a nutshell, then, dying to self and living for Christ, walking spiritually minded instead of fleshly minded, that's the definition of Christian freedom. Let's look at the second part of this then. An important aspect of Christian freedom is our responsibility not to return to living under the law. And I'm not talking about governmental laws. We're talking about ceremonial laws in Scripture that we have to do this, we have to do that. We have to perform for our salvation. We have to be good people. We have to be obedient people. We have to act certain ways, think certain ways. And if we conform, then we belong to the body of Christ. It says, no. Live free, but know that living free is to die to self. Live free, but know that living free means to love your enemy. Live free, but know that to live free means turning the other cheek. Are you seeing the problem we're having right now as a society? We are being sorted out. God will sort us out. He will try us and refine us for his kingdom's sake, for our benefit, and to strengthen his body. And that's where I'm struggling. I'm having to deal with that flag and the cross. They're not mutually exclusive, but they do have boundaries. And I need to know that one is over the other and not lose track of that. It's tough. It's hard to do. 
Romans 6, 14 says this, Sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. And as we begin to walk in grace, we begin to walk in love and peace and joy and kindness and self-control and all of the fruit of the Spirit that we cannot get on our own by trying. And I'm telling you, the fruit of the Spirit is being tested in God's people right now. We're being tested whether we are walking in peace, in joy, in love, in patience, in kindness, in tenderheartedness, and in self-control. We're being tested every single day in the situation that we are in right now. Let me see if I don't send my notes to one of your cars here real quick. There we go. The Apostle Paul, next bullet, compared living under the law to slavery. And the word for slave means a bond slave. It means somebody else owns you. And if the law, the law of ceremony and religion and philosophy in this world owns you, then that's what you are a slave to. But if the law of grace and mercy and salvation through Christ is what you live under, are you free? Here's, here's the catch. Yes, we are free to be a slave. Well, wait a second. I thought we were freed and no longer a slave. No, we were a slave to sin, and now God wants us to be a slave to him. Either way, we are owned by somebody else. Either God owns us, and we live our life, relinquish it to him day by day, point by point, event by event, moment by moment, or the world owns us, and it will guide what we do and how we think and how we feel. So Paul calls the law slavery. And right now, lost people, I've got some kind of click going here, Chris. It sounds like a demo or something. I have no idea. That's interesting. When we live under the law after salvation, you develop a legalistic form of religion. And we can't earn righteousness through the law. Rather, the law's purpose shows us our shortcomings and our failures and how Christ has paid the debt that we can't pay and paid the price that we cannot pay. Christian freedom then involves living not under the burdensome obligations of the law, but under God's grace. But with it comes great accountability and great responsibility. Your next bullet in Christ, then, we are free from the law's oppressive system. We don't have to walk a certain way, talk a certain way, dress a certain way within the body of Christ. We are free to be who we are as individual people. And yet we are not free to just do anything we want because we have to consider how other people within the body relate to us and we to them as well. So we're free from the oppressive system. We are free from the penalty of sin. We are free from the power of sin. Now for a moment, let's get away from the ceremonial law and deal with earthly law for a second. By design, it is intended to control. Control outcomes, control damage, control behavior. And as long as I'm walking within a system that I agree with, it's not so oppressive. But the minute it crosses over into the things that I don't like, all of a sudden it gets oppressive. And all of a sudden there's all these rules that's confusing everybody. And right now, what I'm striving for because I'm not going to get rid of the oppression that this world is going to throw. I'm striving to find peace within that system until it changes and figure out how to fight back in ways that are 
good for everybody and will help move things forward. And it's a hard place that we're in right now. So the next bullet becomes true. We are free in Christ, but we are not free to live however we want. So whether I like it or not, in certain circles, I will have to conform to certain kind of behavior so that I don't offend people on purpose. And there are other times that I'm free from that because I may be in a different group of people. It's not being compromising or being wishy-washy. It's just recognizing that everybody views things differently. When we go back into the church, we have to do it with respect for the place God has given to us, and yet with celebration, and with joy, and yet with sorrow that things are going to be different, even inside going forward until we get our bearings going forward. I have a sneaking hunch that in the body of Christ, within our local churches and across our country, there will be a percentage of people that will never set foot in a church again for, for various reasons. There will be another set of people that will come into a building, but they will have their guard up and they will not know how to put it down. And they'll be afraid to talk to touch, to hug, to shake, to whatever. We're going to have to go through that together, and we're going to have to figure out how that works because we haven't made it there yet. So I'm not just free to come up and grab you if you don't want to be grabbed. I'm not just free to to, to run up and, and grab your hand and shake it if you don't extend it. We have to figure out how this works going forward. One thing I think we've all figured out, I hope, is we need each other badly. And this alone stuff is no good. Galatians 5, 13 through 15. Brethren, we've been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Now, that's primarily within the body of faith, but here's the problem. When I'm out in public, I don't know all the people who belong to Christ. So I may just treat them as somebody who's kind of crossed my path in a way I don't like. You're going down the highway. Somebody zooms past you and cuts in front of you, and you begin to speak in tongues of men and perhaps sailors. And you begin to use different sign language. And then you go, oh my God, that was the pastor that just passed me. And then you're trying to retract everything you just did. I can't be the only one that lives in that area. You ever gotten mad at somebody, reacted, and then found out they're a brother or sister in Christ and felt so ashamed and so guilty and you tried to walk it back and you really couldn't because your foot was so big in your mouth you couldn't take it out to do it. That's where we're at right now. We're going to have to have extreme patience, extreme understanding. We're going to have to lift some people up and carry them gently back into the fold. Other people are going to want to come in like a bull in a china's closet closet and tear it all up, and we're going to have to expect a little bit of that and adjust accordingly. And if we can love our neighbor as ourself and our brother and sister in the faith, as Christ does, we can move forward. Here's what the end of that verse says. If you bite and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed one another. So remember, I'm trying to stay aware of this myself. This is why I do so little posting. Once you post something on social media, it's almost as eternal as your salvation. It's on a hard drive, super drive somewhere, and it's not going to go away. So be careful that you express not all of your feelings all the time in that way. Because you just don't know what's happening by the receiver. We need to be careful of that, self-included. How we react and respond to people 
To my best count, I've only offended three clerks so far at various businesses by getting a little snippy with them because they got a little snippy with me. And I have to apologize for that, and I have to sort it out, straighten it out, and just pay attention and not do it again. Three is three too many times, but I'm trying to not pass five, okay? I, I'm well within the, my own boundaries at this time. Anybody else keeping tally of how, how grumpy you're becoming? That's a joke. You can honk. Let's look at the last. <laughs> Let's look at some paradoxes. Paradoxes. Christian freedom is one of the many paradoxes of the Christian faith. What does that mean? That means two opposing things that don't seem to fit together, and yet they must fit together. Romans 6, 17 and 18. But God be thanked that you were the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you. Being then made free from sin, you became servants of righteousness. Catch those words. The word for servant is a bond slave. That means you have been compelled and forced into that position. And by the cross of Christ, we are compelled to be his slaves and servants. It's not an option. It's something that we must do and we must allow Christ to do. And so, true freedom, first bullet, means willingly becoming a slave to Christ. Willingly. It's an issue of the heart. Right now, there are certain things I can comply with because I should and I need to, and we can have that discussion. I can do it outwardly and not like it inwardly, but that's not what he's asking us to do. True freedom means that from my heart, I belong to Christ. I am his slave, I am his servant, and he doesn't ask me what I want to do, he doesn't ask me what I think, he doesn't ask for my opinions. He says, here is what I want you to do, love one another, love your enemy, turn the other cheek, obey those that have the rule over you, boy I hate that one because God has placed them there for his own reasons, for his own purposes. When a believer accepts Christ, we are baptized by the Spirit into Christ's death, burial, resurrection. At that moment, we cease to be a slave to sin, and we become a slave of righteousness. And folks, that's where God's going to take his people, and that's what he has always done throughout all of history. The second bullet is true when my willing heart becomes a slave to Christ. Only Christians know true freedom. And I'm not talking about Christians by creed or by declaration or by membership or by association. Only a born-again believer, which is the only kind of Christian there is, knows true freedom. Because you have recognized your sin, and you have repented of it, and you have given your life to Christ, and yet we are still sinners saved by grace, we still understand this world is never going to set us free. It's never going to give us the freedom that we want. Only in Christ do we find freedom in this world and for eternity to come. If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. And only believers know that. Nobody else knows that. Our final thing that we need to deal with today is, are there limits to Christian freedom? Let me see if I can put a general story out with, without offending too many people. I have my lotion, I have my hand sanitizer, I have my cloth mask, I have a whole stack of paper mask. Yes, I do actually have some N95s at home, but those are for in my shop when I'm doing stuff. I've got all the gear, I've got all the tools, I've got all the stuff. If I know that I'm going to greatly offend another believer, 
by not using that stuff, then when I'm around you, I will try really hard to do it. But around other people, it's hard to talk. It's hard to hear people. Beck and I went and voted the other day, and the gal's wearing her cloth mask behind her plexiglass, and she kept talking to me. And I finally said, you know what? My hearing's not good, and you're wearing a mask, and you got a shield between us. She pulled her mask down, stepped around the plexiglass, and talked to me person to person. And I said, thank you for doing that. Because I didn't know what you were talking about. And I need to know what you're talking about so I can vote. So we're going to figure those things out. We're going to have to figure those things out going forward. So let's deal with this question. Are there limits to Christian freedom? And here's how we're going to answer it. We're going to answer it with two scriptures. These two scriptures and the stuff that I have underlined under both of those, these are keys to going forward and living free in Christ. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. Let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth. Now, I've had this conversation with a number of you over the last weeks, and it's been a roller coaster thing. I will, I will not, I will, I will not. And we're talking about these things that are being imposed upon us. And I'm trying to get past that. I'm trying to have those conversations in public and pay attention to what's going on. I mean, in private and pay attention to what's going on in public. Because even though I may choose to not comply with certain things right now, that's not always the best decision to make because of the offense. And because I understand in a different way from you understanding what is going on right now, we got to be t very careful that we build each other up and not shred each other to pieces because that's what I'm seeing on social media right now. There are church people that, when this whole thing's over, are never going to talk to each other again. And that's sad that we've gotten there. Because that should not be the outcome. Let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth. Put other people first in what's going on. And that's hard to do, fellow Americans when I'm in that mode first. But as a believer, that's where I need to go. And I can't do it on my own. Because most of you know me well. I'm a very, this is sarcastic if you haven't caught it, I'm a very compliant person. No, I'm not. And some of you aren't either. So we need to figure out which battles are worth fighting which things are not going to harm me if it's something temporary. I'm also watching precedence in my own way of thinking because of what I said at the beginning. When this world takes it away, this world won't give it back. So we want to be careful there too. But by the same token, when all is said and done and we're gone home, none of this is going to matter a bit. So let's end this way. What is Christian freedom? Love God first. Love neighbor as self. Put others first. Obey what we can in good conscience that does not directly defy God. Because in the end, it doesn't matter. This government belongs to him that he allows it to exist for his purposes, whether we understand that or not. Be thankful, even in what we're going through right now, that you're not in India. You're not in certain other places in the world. You're not with Mauricio right now with an armed guard out in front of your house all day long. 
We're going to have to figure this out going forward because you know what, George, we said this earlier. This is still by far the greatest, freest country in the entire world. Nobody comes close to it. And we want to acknowledge that, but by the same token, our citizenship in Christ is in his kingdom, in heaven, a place being prepared for us. We're walking an interesting line right now, folks. You're going to have to figure out where you are in this. I'm trying real hard to examine myself, know when to fight back, know when to step back. It's hard to do right now. It's real hard to do. Because when, when this is over and we go back in that building, I don't want to lose anybody because we may not see things eye to eye. I don't want to lose anybody because we upset somebody emotionally that we've taken it to that level. Because there's some pretty tenuous things going on right now within the body of Christ. I'm not talking about just our own family. I'm talking about in this city. I want to still be able to fellowship with every other believer in this town. Even if we may disagree with certain things we're doing right now. Thank you for being out here. Thank you for being consistent and faithful. What I would love to see next week, we're going to have a hundred sack lunches prepared. I hope that we don't all have to eat two, you know, that we can have enough people where you will even gather a few extra and take them home to a neighbor, to a friend, to somebody that you know. I would love to be able to see every single person within our church family able to be here for our final uh, fifth Sunday. Sack lunch, that's potluck, okay? That's as good as it's going to get. So you're going to get a sandwich, you're going to get some chips, you're going to get probably some sugar in there in one form or another and a drink. You're also going to get a Lord's Supper packet that is pre-packed. The top is, uh, is juice and the bottom has a little flour, water, or wafer in it. We're going to have to figure that one out. And also, the CMA bikers have been invited to come and, and, and be a part of that. So I hope we have a lot of, a lot of motorcycles show up. And uh, I'm not sure how that's going to play out. Ideally, if they're parked where other people can see them on the road, we might have some other people just pull in. It'd be a great thing next week to have a parking lot full so that when we transition back into the building, we have a building that is as full as we can get it also and not create problems. So pray for each other, love on each other, don't give up on each other, uh, express your dissatisfaction uh, however you do that, but leave the neighbor's dog alone, okay? Don't kick that dog too much. Did we pray? Boy, we need to pray. My, my brain has been so scrambled this week. This, this going through this process is wearing down all of us. Father, guard our thinking. It's tired right now. It's confused. We are physically tired of rules and guidelines and what it means and how it can be best used for the best outcome. We have leadership in our country, Lord, that seems like their brains just scrambled right now with some of the decisions they're making. There's so much inconsistency and, and discontinuity in what's happening that it, it's scaring us and confusing us. So help us to give our hearts to you and to receive the peace that only you can give that passes all understanding. Father, we thank you for the body of Christ. We thank you you've designed us to need each other and be with each other, and we thank you that we can do that this day in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm standing in my Savior's shadow is watching over me I feel the rain I hear the thunder 
as he cries for me I'm standing in my Savior's shadow grace will lead to where I'm free I take his hand we walk together his light shines on me though the devil try to break me my sweet Jesus won't forsake me when I'm in my Savior's shadow where I'm supposed to be I'm standing in my Savior's shadow following his footsteps there every mountain every ocean hears my every prayer though the devil try to break me my sweet jesus won't forsake me when i'm in my savior's shadow where i'm supposed to be. sing the chorus again though the devil try to break me my sweet jesus won't forsake me when i'm in my savior's shadow where i'm supposed to be it's when i'm in my savior's shadow that's where i'm supposed to